in this uh, session we will be uh, looking more in terms of how do i model the term structures of the interest rates right there are uh, various uh, models to uh, look at uh, generating probably the prime uh, intention for us out of this uh, session is generating interest rate trees and uh, what are the ways in which the various models are available to handle this so wherein uh, probably on a broader scale if i have to look at we are uh, we are uh, considering a simple uh, model which is uh, called as a term structure model with no drift this is uh, one which we will uh, look at similarly we will talk about term structure model with the drift or probably with constant drift we'll talk about uh, these things then we have a third set of uh, interest rate generating model called as holy model we'll talk about this model also and finally uh, we would uh, also look at a slightly more sophisticated kind of interest rate generation model called as the vasisek model so these four models uh, primarily is our uh, focus in this uh, session we will try to build the interest rate trees under the assumptions of each of these four models all right so let's get uh, started into that the first of them is focusing on generating a term structure model without any drift now in this model the the uh, the way we are talking about uh, generating the interest rates from period to period follows this kind of an equation a small change in the interest rate within a small time period dt the rate of change of the interest within a small period dt it is assumed to be equivalent to the annual volatility of the interest rates multiplied by a normally distributed random variable so which means here the interest rates are assumed to follow a normal distribution right and it's also assumed that if the annual volatility is something so let me take some example here let's say if i consider a situation where annual volatility is uh, probably a uh, uh, 100% or probably a uh, 100 basis points which is 1% so the annual volatility let's say it is uh, 100 uh, basis points and uh, probably if i want to uh, model the short term interest rates i want to model the short term uh, interest rates on a monthly basis so for this first i need to know the so the sigma as far as this model is uh, concerned the sigma is 100 basis points or probably 1% right once i am talking about 100 basis points i can take that the sigma is 1% now this is an annual value so if i am looking at uh, the monthly value i have to adjust it uh, by multiplying it uh, with square root of dt so if i am talking about uh, monthly so dt for me is nothing but 1 by 12 so dt is going to be that much and what we are saying dw dw is a normally distributed random variable so wh what do i mean by that for dw the mean is zero and the standard deviation is square root of dt so what is the standard deviation here square root of dt so the dw for me is a normally distributed random variable <coughs> 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 
now what does that mean i can generate some random value how do i generate that uh, random uh, value here probably if i am saying the norm s inverse or probably norm s distribution standard normal distribution or uh, it need not be a standard because we are talking of mean equal to zero and variance is not equal to one so i'll directly go with normal distribution norm inverse wherein the if i want to generate for some random probability based on the mean and the standard deviation i'll get some random value so probably uh, in this case let's say i've got uh, the dw as point minus point 17 we can get any number right because it is following a normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and uh, the standard deviation equal to square root of dt so if i am uh, looking at if i am looking at uh, refreshing uh, it i'll get uh, different sets of values right sometimes plus sometimes minus whatever it is so what does that mean the dw is going to be something like uh, uh, is going to be this value because it will have it will generate a set of random variables with a mean equal to 0 and standard deviation equal to mean so if i am assuming that this is the value well, how do i uh, come out with my interest rate let's say currently the short term rate the short term rate let's say it's around 5% how do i use this uh, information now i will take dr dr is nothing but uh the annual volatility times dw so the annual volatility is 1% times this is my dw so this is what uh, is going to be my uh, dr right uh, so probably i can very well uh, say that the interest rates for the next month interest rate for the next month is going to be this much plus this much so probably if i am uh, extending it uh, in terms of uh, the percentage and probably the decimal points it is coming out that the next period interest rate is going to be 5.1 similarly i can uh, very well uh, generate okay 5.58 5.07 5.53 5.06 so there could be a decrease or there could be a increase kind of situations so this is uh, how we generate uh, the interest rates for the next period using the no drift model what is this no drift we are we are not uh, increasing <coughs> let's say the interest rate currently is 5% what is happening here 5% the next period interest rate how are we computing 5% plus sigma times dw and because dw uh, is a random variable that lie, that has a mean of 0 what could happen is on an average the increment is zero so 5% if i am taking the mean of this entire thing it is still 5% only because the mean of dw is zero so there is no constant increase or constant decrease in the interest rate the interest rate is always fluctuating around that 5% mark only in some cases it may go up some uh, some months it may go down but on an average it will be around the 5% mark only because the dw is a normally distributed random variable with zero as the mean so obviously uh, for this entire thing the mean will come out as zero for the change in the interest rate the mean will come out to zero which means the the <laughs> the uh, the interest rate will fluctuate around that 5% only forever means there is no constant growth or constant fall in the interest rate at all that is the reason 
we call it as a node drift kind of a model and how do i uh, use this model uh, to build the binomial uh, tree binomial tree of the interest rate so if i am uh, assuming that the rate is this is following a normal distribution now for the rate i know that it will uh, have a mean of 0 the rate change right the rate change the mean is 0 because uh, this the mean of this is going to be 0 and the rate change the standard deviation for this is going to be sigma into root dt the standard deviation of the rate change is going to be sigma times uh, root dt so based on this i can uh, build a tree saying if the, if this is the current r i can very well say at the end of uh, one period this becomes r plus sigma root dt and on the downward side i can say r not minus sigma root dt the same logic i can use again so r not plus sigma root dt i'll add another sigma root dt and again uh, r not plus sigma root dt minus sigma root dt the same way i can keep building my tree altogether so let's say if uh, five percent for the same example if i have to build the tree this is one instance but if i want to build a tree i have to talk about the average up movement as well as the average down movement and i know that 50 percent of the times because the mean is zero 50 percent of the times the rate can go up 50 percent of the times the rate can go down and the average increase in the rate so if i'm talking about uh, the current interest rate being five percent the upward side would be five percent plus sigma into square root of dt so the upward side is going to be 5.28 percent probably it's better that uh, i work out on 5.29 percent similarly this is going to be 5 percent minus sigma times square root of dt okay so this can so at the end of one period there is a 50 percent chance that the interest rate can go to 5.29 percent or it can come down to 4.71 percent as per this model similarly uh, i can talk about on the same lines 5.29 percent plus sigma times square root dt again around 5.57 percent it can go to 5.58 percent the same logic probably i can use here right uh, sigma okay equal to this plus sigma times square root dt around five percent and similarly sigma i mean uh, r not minus sigma times square root dt so what we are saying is we can very well build an interest rate tree here using the node drift kind of a model all we are doing is we are trying to find out uh, uh, we are fi uh, uh, we are trying to uh, find out uh, r not which is the current short term interest rate and uh, we uh, once the annual volatility of the interest rates value is uh, available to us we multiply it with sigma root t add and decrease because there is no constant uh, drift that is involved in the model we can uh, very well uh, add and uh, add and subtract that same uh, sigma dw or uh, probably a uh, sigma root uh, dt 
because we are talking about an average increase in rate versus average decrease in rate so the interest rate tree is built like this and uh, there is a 50% chance of going up as well as a 50% chance of going down so this is how our uh, uh, no drift uh, model interest rate tree is uh, built <coughs> but here what we are uh, seeing is it can come down 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 probably after a certain if i am building so many periods this is just assuming this is two months now probably if the same thing i have to uh, take it for uh, 20 months there might be a possibility that one of these interest rates can actually come out to be negative one of these interest rates probably if, uh, if the same process is continued for uh, 10 more or 20 more months it may so result that some of these interest rates will turn out to be negative especially if this rate is very very small let's say around 2 percent or 3 percent what you could see is after some n number of uh, periods the the interest rates can turn out to be negative also which could clearly indicate to us that this model may not be robust because negative interest rates is something which cannot be uh, uh, looked at in reality at all right and uh, what we are also saying is probably if i am increasing more number of uh, periods the final values whatever are coming out i am assuming that they will follow a kind of a normal distribution itself that is what uh, our assumption is that the interest rates are assumed to be normally distributed i create a tree for over uh, n number of uh, periods we see that the final uh, nodes that are going to come up they are going to follow a kind of a normal distribution itself so the negative values whatever are going to come out i need to have a mechanism to handle them out otherwise this particular uh, term structure model may become completely uh, unusable for uh, doing the valuations or uh, for doing the pricing of the options or any of those stuff so from that standpoint <coughs> if at all a negative interest rate is going to come up to address that there are a couple of things which uh, people were uh, talking about instead of uh, thinking of a normally uh, distributed interest rates it would have been better if you have assumed that the interest rates or some transformation of the interest rates they follow completely positive distributions like log log, log normal or probably chi squared which they, in which they are capped at zero so they do not uh, have any possibility of negative values coming up so there is uh, one more uh, uh, thought process that we can very well uh, consider uh, the interest rates or some transformation of the interest rates to follow a log normal distribution or a chi square distribution rather than going ahead with the assumption of a normal distribution but that would create a new problem probably uh, the if, if we know these um, log normal or chi squared their typical shapes are more like this which means they can create additional layers of skewness in the interest rate so though this negative interest rate problem is uh, getting solved it may create some new problems with respect to the skewness so that suggestion in terms of handling of the negative interest rates is being removed but the other side is okay wherever this is going negative just make it zero forcefully the other way to address this negative interest rates issue is wherever it is turning out to be negative just try to make it explicitly zero this model is slightly more better to apply because uh, <coughs> the chance of this probably after uh, 10 periods here if it is going to be zero or uh, the chance of it becoming negative out of these many possibilities that can occur 
the chance of having a negative value is pretty much negligible and that small negative you making it zero may not have much of an impact at all especially where the average behavior is being considered when i say average behavior being considered for pricing of uh, non option securities we only talk about okay what is the average price during this particular period even if there is a negative value it hardly matters but when we are uh, talking about uh, 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 when we are talking about uh, asymmetric uh, payoff securities like uh, options and all uh having a negative even if it is a minor negative value the impact is going to be severe itself so in those kind of cases probably uh, understanding the negative and uh, seeing the impact of what the negative will have on the overall value needs to be uh, studied whereas uh, wherever the average behavior is a concern probably we can even uh, go ahead uh, ignoring that negative values also so out of these two especially if i am if i am bent upon that i am going to use this model for generating the interest rates again please keep this in mind if i am bent upon that i am going to use this model only to model my uh, interest rates for the future instead of using a log normal or any other distribution it is suggested <coughs> that you can uh, go with uh, converting the negative values into zero and then going ahead uh, using it for the valuation purpose rather than changing the distribution of the original model itself so now just to evaluate what is the goodness or what are the drawbacks with that particular model what we have uh, already uh, discussed is okay if the current short term rate is 5% these rates they fluctuate around that 5% itself if this is slightly more than 5% this will be slightly less than 5% the same logic will get extended here but the mean of these two will work out to again 5% only similarly the mean or the expected value of these will work out to 5% only which means there is no drift whereas uh, in the earlier session also we have seen the more and more values i mean the change in the values are coming up with the term with more term to maturity time to maturity or more volatility existing in the security what we would be uh, seeing is the effective rate of return for this period is actually going down because of the convexity effect and as the time period is increasing the convexity effect is actually uh, increasing and because of more and more uh, convexity effect what we are uh, seeing is the volatility structure <coughs> Uh, the uh, uh, because of that uh, the uh, i mean the effective rate of return for these periods is actually going down right uh, because uh, the as the term is increasing the convexity is increasing and because of an increasing uh, convexity the effective rate of return is actually uh, going down which is an indication that this kind of a model will always uh, will always come out with downward sloping term structure means as time period is uh, increasing the effective spot rate will only come down with the time it cannot go up at all that is one limitation with the model and as far as the volatility is concerned also it is treating a flat volatility structure because at every period the fluctuation is to the extent of sigma root t or sigma root dt so there is a kind of a flat volatility structure that this is bringing in whereas in reality it is observed that it's a humped kind of volatility because the more the security is moving towards the maturity period we see that the volatility is much lesser but somewhere in the middle the volatility is much higher so that's where you see in reality the volatility follows a kind of a humped pattern whereas this model will generate a volatility which is more and more of a flat structure and 
as has already been uh, discussed this considers only the initial rate of interest as the only variable or the factor it does not consider any constant uh, drift or it does not uh, even uh, consider any other changing uh, volatilities or probably it does not even consider uh, that the interest rates uh, if they are high they will come back some kind of a mean reversion behavior in the interest rate none of these things are considered as a part of the model and the major thing is it can model only the parallel shift in the interest rates because we always increase the increase or decrease the interest rates by the same sigma root t kind of uh, scenario but uh, as timing probably uh, uh, probably it might so happen that five year interest rates are increased but 10 year interest rates are not changed or five year interest rates have fallen or 10 year interest rates have not changed or probably uh, <coughs> up to five years they did not change whereas in 10 years they have a change these kind of non parallel shifts in the yield curves are not accommodated properly as a part of this particular model so that where we find some kind of limitations or the drawbacks that are present in this uh, term structure with the no drift kind of a model so using uh, uh, understanding uh, these kind of uh, limitations and uh, trying to build on this is what we would be uh, doing as a part of the next set of models which we are going to discuss moving on to the next one the term structure model with a drift all this model is looking at is instead of just dealing with uh, the dr earlier when we are talking about no drift we were positioning dr as sigma dw whereas here in this model we are talking about some lambda which is positive times dt which means there is a constant drift of some lambda factor every period means on in every period we are expecting that the interest rate will slightly go up along with a random factor because dw is a normal random uh, variable with uh, a mean of 0 and standard deviation of square root of dt so this model the extra thing that this is uh, bringing in is this concept of lambda dt so just taking it into our example what i would be doing is the lambda factor assuming that there is uh, a constant change assuming that uh, there is uh, an annual uh, constant uh, change of uh, let's say uh, 2% or something like that right on an uh, annual uh, basis if i am assuming that there is uh, a constant uh, change of let's say half a percent or 1% assuming that the interest rates on an average they are changing by 0.5% every year what could uh, typically uh, happen is on a monthly basis <coughs> right on a monthly basis they are going to change by around 0.4 or 0.04 percent on a monthly basis i am expecting that the interest rates will change by the extent of 0.04 percent along with that a sigma root uh, the sigma root uh, dt being the factor that is associated with the volatility now in this model what is happening when i am trying to build the interest rate tree using this model along with sigma root uh, dt i am also building in the lambda t into it i am also building in the lambda t into it making it across across the one i'm actually uh, bringing building in the lambda t so even this 5.62 now again with the introduction of uh, lambda t it's going to become uh, 5.66 right along with this it is going to become 5.66 or even this 
along with the addition of uh, lambda t this is going to become 5.08 and probably here also with the introduction of lambda t it is going to become something like this now so these are the numbers so what does that mean here though the though this thing can still go to zero go down to zero after a certain number of periods we are saying <coughs> that there is a, a slight positive drift that is coming up either because of expected changes in the short term rate or it may be even because of the risk premium as the number of as the time to uh, maturity is increasing obviously there is some amount of uh, uh, risk liquidity risk that is built into it which uh, means it should get reflected as a part of the as a part of the return or the interest rate that is getting uh, uh, modeled the only thing is now here if we see this keeps on increasing from period to period so what could very well happen is on an average okay this is five if I look at this average, it is 5.04. So what we would uh, typically uh, end up seeing is the average is actually going up and up. The expected interest rate probably is going up every period. There is no way it can come back. Means probably in the long run, the interest rates are going to touch such a high number that they may not even uh, come back right that is where what we could uh, see is uh, in this kind of a model where the drift is constant probably the long term modeling modeling for a longer term is always uh, not suitable or the model may not be such uh, robust enough to do the uh, interest rate uh, structuring for a longer term compared to a shorter term otherwise it overcomes some of the drawbacks that are available in without the drift kind of a model wherein the interest rate will always fluctuate around that five percent whereas here the average interest rate does not fluctuate around that five percent it always keeps uh, growing up itself probably for a shorter period of time for small term interest rates this looks uh, more and more uh, a decent fitment whereas it may not be the case for long term and on the other side there are two variables now r naught and lambda so how much to be allocated to lambda and what is the value towards r naught that can be built based on the current prevailing interest rates or the current uh, market rates so the fitment can be created quite comfortably but at the same time, the more I am thinking of uh, long term models, it becomes more and more, uh, it becomes more and more restricted in terms of the usage for the same. So generally, this model works well when I am doing uh, the interest rate models for the short term, but may not be uh, encouraging for the long term modeling at all. Now, keeping that in mind, okay the next set of model that is going to be built is we create different lambdas for different period so probably this 0.5 percent i may take as the lambda for the first period period one probably for the period two i may have even another lambda it may be negative also that's one more uh, interesting aspect of this uh, of this uh, model which is called as holy model here it's only the, the the only difference from the earlier model is in a holy model we'll talk about uh, different lambdas which means uh, different drifts for different periods so in some cases these drifts uh, may be positive some cases may be negative and all of them may be different and if they may be equal also but wherever we have the case of the two different uh, lambdas are equal then it is uh, more or less similar to the earlier model which is uh, the model with a drift with a constant drift of lambda but if they are all different 
it is going to produce me a completely different structure for interest rate and uh, because there is a possibility that uh, the lambda can be negative here it's even more uh, uh, it's even more uh, relevant to the real world because uh, we, we don't need to uh, focus only on the growing interest rates with the time period but it can even uh, look at the falling interest rates also so that way uh, holy model is much more appropriate uh, compared to the earlier two models but we are looking at a couple of uh, other models also probably we would uh, slowly uh, move towards uh, what we call as uh, uh, equilibrium based uh, models wherein we would be uh, focusing on basisec uh, model which has even more a better application compared to the earlier models but before we get into it the the three models which we have uh, discussed till now they fall under the category of arbitrage free models why are we calling them as arbitrage free models if we remember here in the whole e model assuming that we have two lambdas and one or not the deciding of these values right uh, how much values or what values need to be applicable to each one of them this is decided based on the prevailing market value that is what i have uh, discussed earlier so wherever we are uh, talking about prevailing market values are more commonly applicable for on the run securities so wherever we have the on the run securities we pull those on the run securities and uh, create uh, uh, and and uh, generate this r not lambda 1 lambda 2 or for that matter any other parameters that are involved by equating the present value of that uh, securities cash flow to the market price so by doing that exercise we are going to decide all these things that kind of model where the parameters are estimated by doing this kind of an equation is what are called as arbitrage free models now these models generally <coughs> they first are used to estimate these numbers and once we have estimated these parameters these parameters are being used to price the of the run are probably the securities which are more and more illiquid so that is what is the typical uh, way any arbitrage free model works but here some of the things that we have to keep in mind is whatever are the assumptions that we are using in this original model to derive these things they if there is a flaw in the assumptions in this in this thing let's say the here i am making an assumption that the interest rates are not mean reverting or here i am uh, making an assumption that uh, <coughs> there is no drift in the interest rate or some such kind of an assumption that i built into the original uh, model that that assumption is what will drive these numbers so once uh, uh, if, if there is a flaw in these assumptions here probably whatever may be the mechanism i am using to arrive at this they will result in wrong conclusions for me so that is one thing that i have to be careful of and they are also assuming that the market values of all those securities which i have taken as my base they are all up to date they are all accurate but in some cases what could happen that price may be because of some small term shock some short term uh, or shorter period shock now if at all i am not able to uh, figure out that uh, the market prices are more or less accurate then probably the usage of this model is questionable and wherever we are talking of comparative analysis of two securities i cannot uh, use these models because uh, they are going under the assumption that this particular uh, security is 
is this is uh, aptly priced and uh, whenever i am deriving these uh, variables they are under the assumption that uh, the pr they are aptly priced itself so comparison of uh, the two models uh, or comparison of two securities is always a difficult thing when we are going ahead with the arbitrage free kind of modeling approach so in those kind of cases we have to get in with the equilibrium kind of models itself and one such equilibrium uh, model that we are going to decide is the vasisek uh, kind of a model here the interesting aspect of uh, the vasisek of course see this is also to some extent an arbitrage it uses an arbitrage free kind of an approach also but more than that okay the some of the most important uh, aspects as a part of this uh, vasisek model is the concept of mean reversion if we remember even in uh, the drift model we are talking about dr equal to lambda dt plus sigma dw the probably when we are going for holy this lambda is uh, changing lambda 1 lambda 2 this lambda value was changing whereas the change in that lambda the vasisek model has actually given some kind of a structure to that change in the lambda value itself and what they have said is instead of a constant lambda or different uh, lambdas coming based on uh, uh, based on uh, uh, the arbitrage free approach rather than that we are saying we'll use this kind of a model for the drift k into theta minus r and what they are uh, simply are uh, talking about is because of the mean reversion the short term interest rate let's assume that this is the current short term interest rate and uh, this is the long term long run short term interest rate in the in the longer uh, term the short term interest rate probably is going to be this what this is saying is if the current short term rate is much lesser let's say theta is some 12 percent whereas I means uh, the short term rate at some other point in time short term rate at some other point in time if i am assuming it as theta and saying it is 12 percent and current r is going to be six percent what it is saying is slowly it will touch this 12 percent and probably once it uh, is more than 12 percent again it may come back to the 12 percent so the long term average there is th that's where we have to use this long term average short term rate this is not the long term rate the long term average short term rate is what we are calling as uh, theta and uh, what the mechanism is saying is the uh, what the vasisek model is saying is the the interest rates will revert to that long term average short term rate uh, at at some speed and that speed is what is given as the k factor right and uh, how do i determine the theta here i am not going with an arbitrage free approach or something like that it is uh, assumed that theta on an average will be something like the r1 which is the current uh, rate of interest right i am assuming uh, sorry rl which is the long term interest rate probably a 10 year interest rate i am not talking about uh, the long the long term average short term rate i am talking about the long term interest rate as of today plus lambda by k lambda is again lambda is again uh, the drift factor for me and uh, k is the rate at which it is getting reverted to the the, the speed at which uh, the current short term rate is approaching the long term average short term rate so this is uh, what is an appropriate uh, formula which is uh, driving the calculation of theta and using uh, this we can uh, very well get into the 
<coughs> modeling of the interest rates using the Vasisek model. Now, let's uh, let's try to model the Vasisek model here. So the same lambda is uh, probably on an average what is the drift, right? Here, if I am assuming that the k, the rate at which uh, it, the value is getting reverted to long term probably it is let's say 5 percent the the parameter uh, k at which uh, the value is uh, getting uh, reverted to the long term uh, long term uh, average short term rate let's say it is uh, 0 0.05 and the standard deviation is uh, 1 percent and let's assume that the long term rate of interest long term rate of uh, interest let's say it's around uh, 5 percent or uh, probably short term itself is 5 right so the long term rate of uh, interest let's say it's around uh, 6 percent and uh, uh, the annual drift okay will uh, go with uh, the uh, lambda which is the annual drift let's assume that it is uh, 0.5 percent uh, per year now going with this i can find out what is the theta which means in the long term what would be, I mean, when I am saying the long term interest rate is uh, somewhere around uh, 6% and uh, uh, the, the, the rate at which probably let me take this as somewhere around 0.2. So, the 0.2 is the factor uh, with which uh, the short term rate is approaching the long term average short term rate. Using this formula, I can compute the theta. So, from this uh, the theta comes out as 6 percent plus the lambda which is uh, the average annual drift divided by the k. So, the, as per that formula we are getting that our theta is somewhere around 8.5 percent means the long term average short term rate the long term average short term rate is 8.5 percent now if the current short term rate is 5 percent so there is a, a chance that the interest rates will go up in future for the next few years and once they are above that 8.5 percent they will start falling also so from this if at all i have to compute the change in the interest rate using the Vasisek model, if I have to compute the change in the interest rate for the next period, I can say k times theta minus r, theta minus r, whatever is the current short term rate, into dt. dt is on a monthly basis, so I will take it as uh, divided by 12 plus sigma dw sigma so the the drift is something like this okay we'll uh, we'll look at uh, uh, the average uh, change itself the drift is uh, going to be uh, something like this and uh, what about the volatility sigma dw so uh, uh, okay on an average the change is uh, going to be uh, something like this plus uh, uh, dw if at all i am uh, considering the volatility sigma root t so the sigma into root t square root of 1 by 12 so i am assuming that the upside movement is going to be uh, something like this the same logic I can apply to the downside movement. So, all I can do is we will start building the tree to understand it uh, much better. Right? It is easier uh, for us to start building up uh, the tree. So, initially I am starting with 5 percent. Now, what we are saying here, I will increase this 5 percent based on this dr formula k times theta minus r k times theta minus r write this entire thing 
k times theta minus r divided by 12 okay plus sigma root dt sigma is 1 percent 1 percent into square root of 1 by 12 let's see what it is uh, coming out yeah this number is coming out to 5.34 percent all right or 5.35 percent and here also on the downward side i'll take the same this this because there is a drift here this plus again k times k times theta minus r by 12 here i'll take minus sigma root dt minus sigma i hope uh, this is comfortable now sigma square root of 1 by 12 so it can uh, at the end of one period my interest rates can either go up to either 5.35 percent or 4.77 percent based on these numbers now this is where a slightly interesting aspect comes especially if you are modeling for the second period look at the second period now this number plus k times okay k times sigma minus r now the r is going to be this one by 12 plus sigma which is 1 percent star square root of 1 by 12 so the upside for the next period is going to be 5.69 percent whereas the downside again the same logic if i use this number plus k times k times theta minus r here the r is different for an up move versus a down move minus sigma sigma is okay i'll take it one percent directly times square root of 1 by 12 so the downside for this is coming out to somewhere around 5.11 percent whereas if i do the upside for this it does not come out to 5.11 percent means this is not a recombining binomial tree this is a non recombining binomial tree just check out this number plus k times theta minus r by 12 plus standard deviation times square root of 1 by 12 so now this is coming out to 5.12 percent that is what is the drawback or that is what is the difference this model creates because the r which you are using for a subtraction inside the theta that is changing and because of that we will not get a recombining binomial tree at all so even with this i am going with k times theta minus r by 12 minus sigma into square root of 1 by 12 so the downside is 4.54 whatever it is now this is what will result in a non recombining uh, binomial tree right because both the paths for 5.11 and 5.12 and as you move along even uh, the differences could be even more uh, significant probably if we are going into a three period tree or a four period tree these uh, differences uh, can become even more significant the reason uh, always uh, is the downside here 
right uh, theta minus this number this number is a smaller number so k times this number is always a larger number so we will see especially uh, when the current short term interest rate is lesser than the long term average short term rate what we will see is uh, the down and up will always be higher compared to an up and down kind of a move and that is uh, one of the things we have to understand with respect to a vasi sec because the vasi sec model uh, for any period more than uh, one period it will create a non recombining tree of the short term interest rates and uh, uh, sometimes uh, or probably uh, uh, generally uh, what people uh, follow is they try to create this non recombining binomial tree into a recombining binomial tree also by following a slightly different approach okay for the first this as well as this i mean for the first uh, node there is not much of a, and in all these cases there is a 50% up and 50% uh, down kind of thing that is going on now assuming these are the numbers as far as uh, the first node is concerned no issues right as far as the first is concerned probably it will uh, remain as it is and even this the as far as the first uh, period is concerned there is not much of a difference uh, even when i have to combine it into a recombining uh, tree not much of a difference so this first part will remain the same but what is suggested is in the second part as a part of creating it into a recombining based on the non recombining okay before uh, we get into that aspect just on this slide we are also look uh, the mean reversion is an important uh, concept as far as the vasi sec model is concerned because in the real world also it is observed that probably if the interest rates are very very low they tend to keep going up and once the interest rates are very very high because of any economic uh, factors or uh, or demand supply or technological kind of uh, scenarios if the interest rates are already at a very high level they tend to keep moving down which means it is very clearly understood that in real world also the interest rates uh, follow a mean reversion kind of a behavior unless we have periods of very high inflation or some very extreme uh, events uh, which may break down the Uh, may break down the mean reverting uh, characteristic but otherwise in general we find that the interest rates are mean reverting itself now in case there is a non recombining kind of a tree what the first process that is suggested is you do the average of the middle values for every node you have to do this exercise you do the average of the two middle values so which will uh, leave you now with some other x here and some other y here right there is uh, means uh, whatever is the interest rate of up moment and the interest rate of down moment these are two different uh, kind of values and now that uh, you have changed this even the probability of up and down moment may not be 50 50 you may end up uh, with the probability of up moment as p and probability of down moment as 1 minus p so if i have to directly take this example itself this is 5% this is 5.35% this is 4.77% so here there is a 50% up and 50% down whereas when it comes here when we are making it as a recombining tree probably this is becoming 5.12% and i don't know this up and up kind of a moment as well as down and down kind of a rate 
and I'll assume here also I'll not take 50-50 I'll take this as P and 1 minus P Q and 1 minus Q the same exercise I'll have to do at every node and how do I solve for these values I have to solve for these uh, four unknowns and uh, uh, and that's how uh, generate for each and every period the way we have to solve for them is yeah the average value here irrespective of uh, p going up or 1 minus p going down the average next period interest rate what could it be the average uh, next period interest rate for me is going to be how much it's based on uh, uh, it's based on 5.35% uh, right so the next period interest rate anyhow the next period uh, average interest rate for me should be 5.35 percent plus if i'm going from 5.35 it should be 5.35 percent plus k times if i'm going with the dr the average growth should be dr itself so this times the k times the theta minus whatever is the current uh, interest rate divided by 12. So, this has to be the average value means around 5 point let me just see yeah 5.35 percent plus k times yeah plus k times theta minus so this should be somewhere around 5.4 percent so one equation i will get is the p times r u u plus 1 minus p times 5.12 percent this should be equal to 5.4 percent this is one equation that i am going to get so probably yes p times this so this is uh, the outcome for me p times so let me assume uh, p as some value 1 minus p as something r u u as something so this is the value of p times r u u whatever is this value let's assume p times r u u and 1 minus p times 5.12 so my equation uh, here is p times r u u plus 1 minus p times 5.12 percent is equal to 5.4 percent so depending on uh, what is the p i am giving and what is the p times r u u i am getting this has to become equal to 5.4 percent same way i can uh, talk about uh, the standard deviation scenario i can equate the standard deviations here also what is the way the standard deviation works p times the each value from the mean so r u u minus 5.4 percent square times uh, the probability of going up plus 5.12 percent minus 5.4 percent square times 1 minus p the square root of this entire thing should be equal to the 1 percent into square root of 1 by 12 even that equation i can do right p times r u u minus 5.4 squared plus 1 minus p into uh, uh, 5.12 percent minus 5.4 percent uh, squared that entire thing should be equal to 1 percent uh, times square root of 1 by 12 
so using this uh, in all these things what is coming out is p and r u u are the two variables for me p and r u u are the two variables and i have two equations solving uh, these two expressions for two unknowns is what uh, will give me the the value of uh, p and r u u and the same way i can do the same for q and uh, r d d and if at all i have uh, the third uh, period also i have to do the similar kind of an approach that is how i can i can make a non recombining uh, binomial tree into a recombining kind of a binomial tree yeah how can we uh, solve for uh, p here the way we can uh, go about uh, with it is simplifying these two uh, equations uh, itself all i can uh, say is okay first match the expected value the p times some r u u plus 1 minus p times uh, what is this uh, 5.12 percent whatever it is 5.12 percent it is equal to the average value 5.4 percent so i'll simplify this pr plus 5.12 percent minus 5.12 percent into p is equal to 5.4 percent so again simplifying p into r minus 5.12 percent is equal to 5.4 percent minus 5.12 percent which is 0.28 percent so from here i can get r minus 5.12 percent is equal to 0.28 percent by p from where i can derive r is 0.28 percent by p plus 5.12 percent this is what is the value of the <coughs> r upward now using uh, probably i can make a note of this uh, somewhere else 0.28 percent by p plus 5.12 percent because once we have these kind of relationships uh, set probably for any kind of a period we can very well do this uh, same process this 0.28 percent is nothing but the difference between uh, uh, the average value and the downside value right that plus 5.12 percent is what is uh, working out for our uh, r now the same thing if i am uh, using the concept of uh, variance or standard deviation r minus 5.4 percent squared multiplied by the probability of up movement 5.12 percent minus 5.4 percent squared multiplied by the down moment this total is equal to the variance so variance how do i get whatever is the standard deviation so the standard deviation we have taken it as 1 percent so 1 percent square is the variance into 1 by 12 this is what is my variance here so probably instead of r now i will convert it into p by substituting that 0.28 by p plus 5.12 percent minus 5.4 percent squared into p plus whatever this is this is 0.28 percent squared into 1 minus p this is equivalent to 1 percent square into 1 by 12 so using this i can very well generate the value of p let's try out right we'll uh, use this so if i if this is the value of p for me what is that i am doing 0.28 so i will uh, generate an output what is this output 0.28 by p how did i get 0.28 the difference between these two so this minus this is what i am calling as 0.28 divided by p 0.28 by p 
माइनस पॉइंट टू एट माइनस अगेन द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू दिस इज माइनस पॉइंट टू एट दिस इज द वन विच इज आई एम टेकिंग इट एज होल स्क्वायर राइट दिस होल स्क्वायर टाइम्स पी दिस इज माई पी सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट टर्म देन वन माइनस पी टाइम्स पॉइंट टू एट होल स्क्वायर अगेन विच इज नथिंग बट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस एंड दिस दिस स्क्वायर सो दिस इज वॉट इज वर्किंग आउट एज द वेरियंस हि the variance in this case okay probably uh, let me uh, do some assume point 2 to start with this is the variance the initial variance for us is going to be this much and uh, this should be equivalent to 1% square by 12 1% square which is the variance divided by 12 so this should be equivalent to this so what i can do i can equate the value of this equal to this by changing this value probably a tool like uh, goal seek uh, or something in excel can really uh, help me out to accomplish this i'll say this value let it be equivalent to 0.00000 This is what is 8.33 into the 10 to the power of minus 6, and change the value of p here. So it's not able to uh, uh, generate, but sometimes uh, using uh, probably if I'm using let's say 0.4, if I use p equal to 0.4, this is coming out to something like this. right we can uh, very well uh, play around uh, with those kind of uh, numbers if i'm uh, using uh, p as let me just compute it here this divided by okay probably you can uh, we can uh, try out on that so the variance uh, working out to that level and uh, uh, probably we can uh, think of yeah uh, we are matching something like this yeah just just uh, playing around so it may so happen that uh, yeah somewhere close to a uh, 0.49 for p and uh, around uh, so if and 0.51 plus for uh, 1 minus p could generate the scenario for you so which means now you can think of your uh, r u u Based on 0.28 by p plus 5.12 percent, so I can very well uh, talk about uh, 0.28 percent by p plus 5.12 percent is the upward movement. So around 5.69 percent is what is the number that gets generated here. So same way I can generate even the downside, and like this we can. keep doing this uh, process until all the nodes of all the trees are typically accomplished so there is a complexity involved in the model but at the same time 
it is able to incorporate the mean reverting behaviors quite comfortably into the model which is what is something very essential uh, for us right so now a few more uh, calculations uh, involving uh, the basisek uh, model apart from computing uh, the average uh, increase or a decrease we are also looking at what should be the expected rate because uh, we see that if in our earlier case if the theta was 8.5% right if the theta was 8.5% and currently the r is 5% we may assume that the r will keep going up at the rate of 0.2 every period and uh, the growth is primarily based on the difference that is getting generated i mean the gap between 8.5 and 5% that is the weight and for the next period let's say if it has gone to 5.35 or something this is purely based on this gap so what we are trying to observe uh, every uh, period is the change is basically in an exponential manner after taking into account the updated difference so from that standpoint the way you will compute what is the interest rate after t periods not after uh, one the way it is uh, going ahead is you can first find out the difference right now the difference is 3.5% right now what we are saying is the at let's say at the end of 5 uh, years i want to find out what would be the uh, what would be the interest rate Uh, expected interest rate, not interest rate. So, the, what would be the expected interest rate? Because as per the model, the change in the rate is nothing but uh, k times theta minus r into dt plus. So, this is the expected rate, whereas this is contributing to the variation. So, the expected rate is more or less this term. The change in the rate is more or less this term, but this term is. changing every period so to accommodate what is going to be the uh, expected rate after t period the process is nothing but i am taking the difference right now and i am doing it as multiplying it as e power minus kt because this is nothing but a weighted average we'll talk about it so 3.5% times e power minus kt k uh, k is the rate at which it is uh, moving so the way i have to uh, compute the decay is nothing but 3.5% into e to the power of minus k t so this is uh, coming out as the decay is uh, coming out to somewhere around uh, 1.5 this is uh, coming out uh, to yeah 1.28% okay the decay is uh, coming out uh, to 1.28% and all i have to do 1.29% all i have to uh, do to find out the rate at that point is subtract this number from theta 8.5% minus 1.29% which is what will give me 7.21% the other way to look at it is quite simple okay at the end of first year just to showcase how it is uh, working out for you right now if it is 5% at the end of first year what is it uh, going to be 5% plus k times theta minus r by 12 so at the end of one period right or probably at the end of uh, i'm not talking about uh, for uh, one month so i don't need to take this so one year it is going to be 5.7% now i'll take uh, the second year 5.7% plus k times theta minus this so this is at the end of 2 uh, years then at the end of 3 uh, years this number 
प्लस के टाइम्स थीटा माइनस दिस प्रॉब्लम आई कैन ड्रैग इट आउट सो एट द एंड ऑफ थ्री इयर्स दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द केस फोर इयर्स दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द केस फाइव इयर्स दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द केस सो दिस इज हाउ इट इज चेंजिंग एट द एंड ऑफ ईच ऑफ दीज पीरियड्स सो प्रॉब्लम आई कैन डू समथिंग लाइक दिस depending on uh, what is the value of uh, k i can very well uh, do it uh, something like this as a decay factor and primarily uh, coming out uh, to finding out uh, what would be the expected rate at the end of five periods at the end of uh, five periods this is what uh, is going to be the rate and at the same time we can even uh, talk about in terms of the half life the half life is basically uh, the period uh, where 50% uh, uh, where the midpoint is typically uh, reached which comes out as uh, log 2 the log 2 divided by k in our case k is 0.2 so within 3.45 years 50% of the gap between the current interest rate and the theta is being met that is one more uh, one more uh, uh, formula or that's one more uh, measure that we do using this wasisek model and looking at uh, how good is the wasisek model for uh, modeling the interest rates couple of very good advantages we see is whatever the rates that are getting uh, created they are getting modeled based on the prevailing uh, rates itself which means the model fitment is good enough but the good thing is the volatility instead of generating a flat volatility structure it generates a downward sloping volatility structure which means in the initial periods the volatility could be much higher but as the time progresses the volatility will come down which means it could very well be said that in the initial periods the volatility is overstated whereas in the longer terms the volatility is understated and what we are also are seeing is the parallel shifts cannot be accommodated quite comfortably because it's going to generate a non recombining kind of a binomial tree the parallel shifts in the interest rates cannot be accommodated quite comfortably it's very good at uh, modeling uh, 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 modeling based on what position it is right now if the interest rates are very low probably it can uh, generate a thrust towards movement upwards if the interest rates are very high it can generate a thrust towards movement uh, downward but any parallel shift will be a problem because uh, Uh, on for all that because one the volatility in the long term is uh, quite lesser means it cannot uh, generate a, a, a kind of uh, a parallel shift across all the term structures at all and the other important uh, thing that needs to be looked at is if at all there are any shocks that are based on short term news right means uh, uh, the reverting to that uh, if at all the interest rate has gone up because of a short term probably it may have to come back also quite uh, quicker or it may have to uh, go down quite uh, quicker uh, otherwise what it is uh, saying is though it is uh, a spur up because of uh, a short term news it will take its own time to come back uh, to the normal or uh, towards the average this is something i mean though by increasing the value of the k we can uh, accelerate its movement uh, back to the uh, long term uh, average of the short term interest rate but how well we can model this k determines the effectiveness of this particular model right so this is what uh, is a brief uh, introduction of uh, this entire uh, drift based interest rate uh, term structure uh, modeling If you have uh, any further queries regarding this, you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that I have given below, or you can even send in an email at vamsidhar at pacegurus dot com. Thanks a lot uh, for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.